Welcome back to the Crypto Gorilla YouTube channel. Today I wanted to talk about some of the biggest mistakes that I made over the past bull cycle. Yes, I know it's very shocking. I'm not perfect, but I do feel there are a bunch of lessons to be learned, especially for myself. So it's good to go over these things. Now, if you like this kind of content, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that like button. It really helps my channel and it gets me through the YouTube algorithm. And if you aren't already subscribed, would you kindly hit that subscribe button? So the first mistake I think everybody makes is not taking profits. Now, to be clear, I did take a decent amount of profits. I sold ETH at 3,400, I sold at 2,400, and I even recently sold at 1,550 because I do believe that ETH is going to triple digits under $1,000 and that Bitcoin is gonna be going under 20K. I just think the whole macro environment is set up for every single market to keep going down and we are not gonna see relief anytime soon. So my strategy with NFTs has been to aggressively flip out of pretty much everything that I've minted. However, I was stacking a lot of ETH and I do wish I would have taken a lot more profits out of Ethereum and not just out of NFT collections. So for myself, I feel when I make profit on a project, the best thing to do is gonna to be to split my Ethereum up into three categories. The first one is gonna be to take ETH off the table, either sell it into stable coins or sell it for cash and put it in my bank account. Then the second group is going to be putting ETH into an ETH wallet where I literally hold that as ETH. I mean, I could sell it if I feel like we're gonna have a market crash. However, that is my ETH bag for when ETH goes to 10 Okay. And then the third group is gonna be Ethereum that I am allowed to either buy things on secondary market, sweep a floor, or do some degen mints. That way I have ETH allocated for different situations and I'm not gonna be blowing all of my profits on some mint of a poop NFT or something like that. Now there are two old sayings. The first one is gonna be bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. That's because pigs in this case are people who do not take money off of the table. And I think a lot of people in this market are in that situation and in the current conditions, they are pretty depressed. And now they're asking themselves, do I sell Ethereum now when it's really low, but I need money. However, I'm gonna miss out on the pump or do I just hang on from here, hope it doesn't go down and wait for a pump. But had they taken profits at the top, one, they would have money to pay their rent and two, they would have money to buy back in Ethereum at these very low prices. Now, the other saying is gonna be that it takes three market cycles in order to make it as an investor. The first cycle, you often end up showing up too late because you weren't able to identify the trend. So you only saw it when it went mainstream. The second one is the pig situation where you are too greedy and you don't take enough profit. And the third cycle is when you make decisions based from experience, you realize the market is not going to be up only and you take profits with every single pump and every time you make a good trade. Now, speaking of the pump, this leads me to my second mistake, which is not selling during a pump. Now, there are many cases where I buy a project because I feel that it's undervalued or I feel like there's going to be some catalyst for it. A perfect example where I actually didn't buy this one is going to be the other deeds. You could have gotten mutant apes at 20 ETH. Ethereum, and they ended up going to 40 ETH. And then you could have also gotten ApeCoin, which I was actively discussing with people in my community. You could have gotten it at $11 and it went to $26. Now for that situation, the pump was real, but for many cases, the pump is a buy the rumor, sell the news situation. And once they announce what it is, the price might keep going up a little bit. However, it often ends up coming down to the price point where you bought in. So it is very important to sell when there is a lot of hype because most of these announcements, they're not real, right? It's not actual people who wanna be part of the community. It's just people who are trying to make a good flip. So a good way to mitigate this is when you buy something, decide what price you think it's gonna to go to and list it right away. Now, if you buy multiple, you don't have to list them all, but at least list some of them. So if there is a pump, you do make some profits. The next mistake is not following my heart. <laughs> There have been situations where I had strong conviction about something and then I joined a voice chat or I spoke to people who kind of talked me out or into something and then I didn't make the decision that I was going to make and it ended up costing me money. Now this is 100% on me, right? This whole game is do your own research. But if you have strong conviction about something, you should follow what you believe. So if you think something's gonna pump and you truly believe it, you've done the research and you think it's gonna happen, yeah, go for it. Or if you think something is a scam, it's a rug, 
you aren't sure about it, don't listen to it just because somebody you know is buying into it. Because if things go wrong, you're gonna be kicking yourself because you didn't listen to your own intuition. Now the next point is not going all in when I have very strong conviction in something. What usually happens is I only buy a couple, let's say I bought it at 0.1 Ethereum, it ends up pumping to three Ethereum, and that's great. I just made three to six Ethereum profit before fees. However, had I bought 10 of them, had I invested the ETH that I'm able to risk, I would now have 30 Ethereum before fees or 60 Ethereum. So if you have strong conviction about something, if you understand this market, the psychology, the culture, that is where you're gonna make the big gains. And there are a ton of situations where I did do this. I had sold my Azuki pre-reveal and then I purchased two for even more expensive than I sold it because I had conviction that they were gonna go up. However, there's also situations like with the Chimpers ebook where I purchased them under one Ethereum. I was gonna purchase a bunch of them. I started off with one rather than just getting three, four, five, and they pumped all the way to five Ethereum. Now the next mistake people often fall for, including myself, is this whole wag me, hodl, we're all gonna make it to the moon. That whole culture that kind of convinces you to follow the cult mentality of just holding and not selling. All of that is extremely overrated. I personally do not believe in wag me, we are all going to make it. That is completely false. I think it applies on a very small scale. For example, my private alpha group, I think many of us have a good chance of making it, especially that we're working together. But this idea that all of us, everybody in this space, everyone watching this video, it's sad to say, but not everyone watching this video is going to make it. At the end of the day, the way markets function, there has to be losers. There has to be a bag holder. Somebody has to buy at the top and take that loss. If everybody's a winner, nobody is a winner. So don't fall for all these slogans that you hear. They're fun to play along with on Twitter, but at the end of the day, if you let it brainwash you, you are going to get wrecked. The next mistake that I've made that people often make is falling in love with a project. Now it's okay to love your PFP, to buy it, put it and say you're never gonna say it, that's fine. However, if you get too attached to a project, too attached to a community, you end up forgetting that at the end of the day, these are really just JPEGs and there's a lot of money on the line. And that whole community mentality could prevent you from selling and make you lose a ton of money, especially in times like now. I think a lot of people like to think that their project is the best, but any project, including Bored Apes, including CryptoPunks, can go to zero. A good example of this is gonna be Azuki. It was on top, then one letter from the founder, and it went from 32 Ethereum, and it's currently sitting under 10 Ethereum. Now, I'm not saying Azuki is dead. I know I just triggered a bunch of people. However, I'm saying any project can die. At the end of the day, these really are just pictures. Now, as for the whole community aspect of this, Gary V actually has a great example. He did a speech at a conference and he uses the Chicago Bulls as the example. And he says back when he was in school, I think he went to school in New York or New Jersey or something, just not Chicago, but at least half of the kids at his school had a Chicago Bull jersey because the Bulls were on top with Michael Jordan. And he says, if you go back to that school today, nobody is is gonna be wearing a Bulls jersey, and that's because they're no longer winning. Everyone wants to be part of a community when they're on top, when they're doing good, because it's kind of showing your clout that you're part of this winning group. But as soon as that group falls from grace, as soon as people stop having the same view of that group, the community itself starts to lose that magic and people go looking elsewhere for a new community. Now, the other argument I often hear is going to be, well, I made a bunch of friends in that group. If anybody is mad at you for selling a picture for $20,000, which is life changing money, they are not your friends. Nobody should hold you hostage to hold onto a JPEG and not take money off the table just because they're part of that same community. If they're not gonna talk to you because you're no longer part of that community, they are not really your friends. The next mistake I've made is going to be not cutting my losses. Now what happens is a project tends to pump and then it goes down a little bit and rather than selling, I think, well, I could have made three ETH and now I could only make two ETH. So I'm gonna wait for it to have another pump and then sell into that pump. But more often than not, these collections do not pump because there is no catalyst in the near future to make other people want to buy into it. And then you get a bear market like we have now and the price just keeps going lower and lower. So I understand that I could have made $1,500 and now I could only make $1,100. However, $1,100 is way better than only making $200 or taking a loss. However, I have sold things 
at a loss that I no longer believed in because again, the whole point of this one is to diminish your losses, right? Cut your losses. So it's okay to take a loss on a trade sometimes. You don't have to hold on to a JPEG just because it's a picture of an animal. It doesn't mean it's gonna go back up. And sometimes it's best to cut your losses and just deploy that money somewhere else. The final one on this list is going to be breaking my own rules. As I said, I was a very aggressive flipper. I called myself a hyper flipper. And towards the end of the cycle, unfortunately, I did end up purchasing a lot of NFTs and literally every single NFT I purchased on the secondary market or the ones I held from Mint is down bad. And that's mostly due to the price of Ethereum being so low compared to when I purchased these NFTs. I calculated all of my purchases recently for accounting reasons, and I am above a 50% loss on the current NFTs that I'm holding. So I'm gonna have to sell some of them at a loss, even though I believe in them, just to take those tax losses and not have to pay taxes on the original price I purchased into. That's it for today's video. I hope it helped you out. I hope you learned valuable lessons and you don't make the same mistakes that I made. However, sometimes the only way you could learn is by making these mistakes. However, the way I look at it is this is the cost of your tuition. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave me a like. It really helps my channel grow. It really helps me get through the YouTube algorithm. If you aren't already subscribed to my channel, would you kindly hit that subscribe button, smash that bell notification. Thank you for watching Crypto Gorilla. Peace.